This video uses mature language and discusses a game meant for older audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Okay, so I beat The Last of Us Part 2 twice, and now I want to talk about it because I have a lot to say. So, The Last of Us 2 works really well for me, mostly because The Last of Us 1 works so well for me. Hell, The Last of Us 1 works so well, it became my favorite video game of all time. When I first played it, I probably would have given The Last of Us 1 like a 6 or a 7 out of 10, because the gameplay wasn't entirely developed yet. Because Naughty Dog had never developed a game like it before. Uncharted was similar, but it's still way different in terms of writing, characters, gameplay, and overall quality. Now I think I would rate The Last of Us 1 a 10 out of 10, because the story is so great, the gameplay doesn't really matter to me that much. It's still fun to play, don't get me wrong, but I think I can focus more on the story than I do on the gameplay, which I did the first time around. But because I like The Last of Us, I was more than willing to wait 7 years for a sequel. But for me, a sequel needs to justify itself. Does the story need to continue? We'll get to that later, but right now I want to talk about the only thing that I can talk about without spoilers, the gameplay. So let's get into it. The gameplay in The Last of Us 2 is really good. The stealth is done so expertly, and the gunplay is explosive. Every time you shoot someone, you feel the impact. When you shoot someone from a hidden location, the NPCs will call out where you are, or where the shot came from. The enemies act like real people, and I love it. When they see you shoot their friends, they cry out, like real people would. People climbed on that, but I honestly love it. The bits where there is no combat are great for the story and provide a lot of insight into the world. However, the rest of the game is just really, really boring. If you aren't getting more story, you're killing people, you're looting cupboards and unlocking safes, and this is so annoying. The combination for the safe is literally always one room away, so if you're going to be that lazy, just let me get inside the goddamn safe and get the treasure. It pisses me off when you waste my time with this shit. I play this game on the moderate difficulty, and the resource management is so important in this game, even on that difficulty. I didn't know whether to craft a Molotov or a health pack 70% of the time. Crafting was done really well in the first game, and it's only improved in this one. Ellie also dies so fast that you really need to know who to shoot, who to stealth kill, and who you can get away with just not killing. Every combat encounter is really fun, and I even redid a couple that I really liked just for the sake of doing them again. Naughty Dog recently released an update that added cheats to the game, and with them applied, the game is just a third person shooter, and I loved it. Having infinite ammo would let me stealth kill a whole combat encounter with my bow or just run in guns blazing, and it's really fun. It adds a new level to the gameplay that I honestly wasn't expecting, but I'm really glad that they added it. After I beat the game the second time, I just sat there and thought to myself, I really fucking like this game. But even though the gameplay is really good, there's still some parts of the game that I don't really like. Those things are a part of the story, and I can't really talk about the story without spoilers, so there's your warning. The story in this game is really a mixed bag for me. I honestly have no idea what to think about it. I think about all the things that I love, and I really love them, and then I think about all the parts that I don't like, and some of them aren't so bad, and then some of them are just really terrible. So I guess we'll start with the things I like and go from there. The first thing I really like is Joel's death. Joel wasn't a great person, and it would have made sense for him to have made enemies. Sometimes enemies, or those close to your enemies, seek revenge. Abby killing Joel makes perfect sense. I love the way it's handled after the fact as well. Everyone is impacted in some way. Abby isn't satisfied. Her friends think she didn't go far enough. Ellie is traumatized, rightfully so. Jesse is upset because he looked up to Joel. And Dina is upset because Ellie is upset. Joel's death and the events afterwards have consequences for Ellie and Abby. Abby kills Joel and all of her friends die. She leaves the only people she's ever known. Her new friend's sister dies in front of her, and she's kidnapped, tortured, and literally crucified before her being saved by Ellie, and then forced to fight Ellie over the fear that she will kill Lev, the only family that Abby has left. Ellie tries to get revenge on Abby, and her best friend dies. Her surrogate uncle loses his eye and almost loses a leg. She develops PTSD after watching her surrogate father die. She loses two of her fingers, so she can't play guitar anymore, which was the last reminder of Joel she had. And, to top it all off, Dina leaves her and takes their child with her. Ellie has nothing. She's left with no one. Joel's death not only makes sense in the context of the story, but it also impacts the rest of it and is the main motivating factor. I also really like the ending. Having Ellie become worse than Joel in terms of things she's done, 
Ellie tries to fight someone who is visibly weak and is hellbent on murdering her. This fight solidifies what Ellie would do for those she loves, and it also shows us the disregard she has for the people she doesn't care about. Near the end of the fight, Ellie is about to drown Abby, and I first thought that this was just a cliche way of telling us, Oh, well, um, Joel wouldn't actually want Ellie to do this, um... But after the fight, there's a flashback to a scene where Joel and Ellie are talking about forgiveness. To me, that is the theme of the game. Ellie has to learn to forgive Abby for killing Joel. Abby has to learn that she should have forgiven Joel for killing her father. The ending of the game is brilliant. I love the characters in this game, and I love the gameplay and the story as a whole. But there's still shit that I don't like, so let's talk about that. No! <laughs> the first thing is that the pacing in this game is just the worst thing. Like, it's, it's really terrible. Playing the first half as Ellie and the second half as Abby is really dumb, and I think it would have been better if instead of the flashbacks being put wherever, they were put at the beginning. We start as young Ellie, and then they play as young Abby until modern day, where Ellie goes to save Joel from a character we know and feel for. Then we swap back and forth as Ellie and Abby until the end of the game. But that idea apparently sounds like dog shit to Neil Druckmann, who just wanted to split the game in half because Metal Gear Solid 2 did it, and it's one of his favorite games of all time. He wanted to emulate that. But it was done way different, and probably better, in Metal Gear Solid 2. Um, I'm, I actually don't know for sure. I never really played Metal Gear Solid games at all. Um... The flashback placement also really bugs me, and when we get the flashback within flashback, it just feels messy. This problem would be largely solved by placing the game in chronological order, and then playing as Ellie and Abby's perspectives together as opposed to the final product where you play as Ellie, and then you play as Abby separately. The stories are also very disconnected from one another. For Ellie's whole story, she has no idea about the jungle cult, and for Abby's whole story, she has no idea about Ellie, Dina, Tommy, and Jesse. I think if some adjustments were made, this would be a more than worthy sequel, and something I would gladly have waited 8 years for. So, did the story need to continue? Did the sequel justify its existence? Well, not entirely. The game is good, but it's not as good as the first one. But, I guess I gotta give Last of Us 2 a number score, because that's all some people care about, so I guess it gets an 8 out of 10. Bye everybody. Hey everyone, I just want to say thanks for letting me talk about this game, and for letting me do something a little different with this video. I really like working on this type of video, so it's going to become more mainstream. LEGO videos aren't going to stop, but I wanted to start talking about games and movies that I have feelings about. That's why the channel name changed again, um, because I don't really want it to just be limited to LEGO customs. I want to be able to do video essays when I want, or sometimes just like different videos in general. Um, yeah, thanks again for letting me talk about this. That's all I have to say. See you guys next time. Bye!